So think of it like a social version of Carfax. The art of the elevator pitch has been lost and we're here to bring it back. After five years and 3,000 pitches, we've developed a simple formula that anyone can build from. Who are you? What is your company? What problem do you solve? How do you solve it? Who's going to pay you money? What do you need? Nail that in 30 seconds and you're on your way. How will today's entrepreneur do? Pitch practice is now in session. My name is Ed and I'm the founder of VinWiki. Uh, buying used cars is difficult and so we are a crowdsourcing social vehicle history reporting platform. So think of it like a social version of Carfax. We allow anyone to post any information to a car by its VIN or by its license plate and over time that builds out a history of where the car's been, who's worked on it, and things like that have happened. So we're live in the App Store and we do a lot of marketing on YouTube so please download our app and uh, follow us and watch our videos. Now let's break down today's pitch. Well, you got to love Ed. He always starts with a laugh and ends with a laugh. Thank you very much, Ed. We appreciate you coming to Pitch Practice once again. Um, we know it's Ed. We know it's VinWiki. What we don't know is that Ed has been selling exotic cars for a very, very, very long time. So he knows the car trading business cold. He is a, a well-known name, uh, not to mention an outlaw in that business. And you can go to his website and find out more about that. We know it's Ed. We know it's VinWiki. Um, but we need to know a little bit more about you, Ed. We need to know why you are qualified to make vehicle history. The pain point here, the problem is really clear. And if you've bought a used car, you know exactly what Ed's talking about. Buying used cars is difficult. I am one of the people who could have used this a long time ago. Not so long ago. Uh, six years ago, I bought my current car. I like it. It's fine. It's got me around. Um, however, about a year and a half uh, or two years into my ownership of that car. I was driving up Georgia 400 coming home from church with my family in the car and all of a sudden uh, there goes the engine. Engine light comes on. It starts sputtering and sputtering. I barely got over to the side of the road and made it up the exit. Brand new engine. Turns out the Carfax report for that car when I bought it left out the fact that it had been wrecked. And not just ding, but it had actually been wrecked pretty hard. There was some minor damage to the engine that didn't show up till I was riding up the highway on Georgia 400 with my family coming home from church. So I had to put a brand new engine in that car. Now, if VinWiki had been around back then, not that anybody's gonna run around taking pictures and reporting what happened on my, uh, my 15 year old Sequoia, but um, I might have known more history about it than I did. And the cower facts was wrong. That's the basic premise here. And Ed didn't mention that um, as far part of the problem, but it is part of the problem that Carfax is limited to the people who actually service the car. And if they don't put it in, it's not going in. So um, it's a problem. I'm a victim of that problem. Now I'm not a victim. It happened to me. I could have known better. I could have done a better check, but it happened to me. Its solution is VinWiki. It's a, what do you say, a crowdsourced vehicle history reporting platform. A social version of Carfax. So anybody can post information about a car based on that car's VIN, its vehicle identification number, or its license plate number. So in other words, you're not just relying on the service, whoever did the service to the car, anybody. If you see you know, a car wrecked on the side of the road, Maybe you recognize it, maybe you don't, but you could easily take a picture of it, get the, uh, the, the uh, license plate number, and put that in VinWiki. Boom. Social crowdsource reporting app. Very cool. Do you know who Ed's customer is? Well, he didn't talk about customers. He talked about users. So we don't know who his customers are. We don't know how he makes money in VinWiki. We don't know that. And he didn't go there. So... Um, if there's a way that Ed's making money right now, we don't know what it is from his pitch. And uh, so we don't know the economics of his social crowdsourced vehicle reporting history app. We don't know the economics of that. Maybe it's not important. We don't know. Uh, he chose not to put it in his pitch. So we have to believe that he's doing something else, but we don't know uh, how he makes money. We don't know who pays him money today. I know the VinWiki app is free. Ed asked for two things. Normally I would say just one. Um, and he asked for two things here. So he asked for go download the VinWiki app and watch our videos. Now what I did like with Ed, what he did, and of course Ed's very polite, he said please. It's really simple. 
every word you say matters. And if you ask for something, why not say please? People will listen. It makes a difference. Those little words make a difference. So he asked for those two things. I'm not sure which is more important to him right now. I think it's that you go watch his videos because he's got a thriving YouTube channel. Um, so when you're asking for something in a pitch, in a short pitch, keep it to one thing. When you ask for two things, generally people are going to, uh, and then forget them both. So ask for one thing, the thing that you need the most right now. Every startup needs something. Ask for what you need the most right now. Thanks, Ed. Always entertaining you, having you in the house. We wish you and VinWiki the best of luck. We'd love to know how VinWiki's going to make money and who's going to pay you money. And good luck on that YouTube channel. Thank you very much for sharing that with us.